Chapter 3 Five hours. It took five hours to drive from Jalou to Justin's Ridge. Far too long for a starving baby, for there was no place closer where JR could stop. Happily, the baby fell asleep pretty early in the trip, but not the kid. She kept blabbering and blathering for four hours straight as the sun set and the moon rose. And my mom my, my said we're not allowed to talk to strangers, but you're okay because my friend told us you were coming to take care of us. But anyway, you know what she did? She talked to a guy she didn't know on the street. And I said, my mom, we're not allowed to talk to strangers. And she said, by the time you pulled up to a grocery store in a line of shops, JR was ready to pull his fur out. He unmounted the speeder without even turning off the engine. And that's why I hate the purple pony in the show. The kid shut up long enough to survey the wood panel buildings with the faded weather-stained red awning. Where are we? A store. J.I. turned his back to her, hoping she'd get the hint and shut up. Gotta find a way to get rid of her, he muttered. Maybe I can leave her in a stoop somewhere. Here, mister. The kid set her sister aside to climb out of the speeder. The motion caused the baby to wake up and whimper, gearing up for a wail. This is the kind of milk you have to get. She held out a yellow canister to J.R. My mind says the other kinds upset cat's tummy. My mind? J.R. scratched his hair. She'd been saying that a lot. She must mean mommy. Weird accent the kid had. Is that right? He snatched the can from her. And they make her poop stink. Thanks for the thought. J.R. barged into the store, leaving the kit behind. The bell tinkled as he walked in. The store was built with dark wood, and that along with an awning shutting out most of the light made the store look darker than it was under the pale moonlight. Barrels of pickles and apples and pyramids of canned food stood at the head of each aisle. A ceiling fan whirled above, but it moved so slowly J.R. felt it was more for effect than to cool the place down. A store, all right, but an old one. The place hadn't changed since he was a teenager. All part of its charm. Who's there? A brown dog with fluffy ears and dark brown hair that fell down her back stepped out of an aisle. She had a broom in her hands and wore a full green apron. I thought I locked up. Glad you didn't. I wasn't expecting you back till morning. Melody leaned on her broom. Couldn't find anyone to shack up with for the night? Had a minor emergency. Jar leaned out of the aisle to grin at her. But I'd be happy to shack up with you if you're offering. I'll pass, thanks. Melody balked as she returned to her sweeping. I'd like to respect myself in the morning. You're lost. Jar shrugged as he wandered down the aisle again. How's the old man? Sleeping. Wasn't feeling well last I heard. He's fine now. Good. Jar returned to his hunt. He'd grown up in this town, so he knew the store like the back of his hand. Or nearly. He had a firm command of the alcohol, chips, and meat section, learned enough of the produce section to know how to avoid it, and could guess approximately where the milk, cheese, and frozen food section was. But the baby section? This is like a labyrinth. Jerry glanced down aisle after aisle until, yes, right next to the feminine products. He cringed. Another section he'd never been caught dead in. This is obscene. He kept his eyes straight forward as he passed various napkins that didn't look like any napkins he'd ever seen. He would have never thought it, but he was relieved when he found himself among the diapers and formula. Let's see. Jar studied the empty canister the kid had given him. Rexwim formula, vulpine mix, as gentle as mother's milk, had been printed beneath a picture of a red vixen holding a fox kit to her chest. He glanced at the shelves for a match to the canister. There were several Rexman formulas in various colors, each meant for separate species. The yellow one caught his eye. Yep, he compared it to his own. Perfect match. But wait. Blue lettering was printed on the bottom, just mixed with water. Water? He shook the canister. Ah, it's a powder. He sighed and went to grab a bottle of water from the refrigerator. Hey, GR, almost done? Melanie called from the front store. I'd like to lock up soon. Yeah, I... Jar halted. He glanced at the canister, then towards Melody's voice. He couldn't let her see this. If she did, she'd known he'd gone soft and brought two kids home. The story would run all over town, possibly the world. It would ruin his street cred. No one would ever respect him again. Worse, Melody would never let him live it down. He slipped the canister into his coat and headed to the door. Since you want to lock up, I'll go ahead and leave. Hold it! Manly pointed as she stepped into the aisle. Don't you dare go without paying. Drat. Jar turned. Uh, look, Mel, I can explain. 
Explain what? I don't care if it's just water. You are not getting away with anything from this store. You get away with too much already. Melody held out her hand. 179, please. Oh, right. JR dug into his pocket while trying to keep his coat closed and a canister hidden from view. He withdrew a bill and handed it to her. Keep the change. Keep the change? Melody angled one of her ears back. Why are you being so generous all of a sudden? And since when do you drink water? I'm just thirsty. He backed to the door. Okay, bye. He darted out and nearly tripped over the kid. What are you doing, kid? He glanced over his shoulder at Melody. She merely shook her head and went back to her business, forgetting to lock the door. Again. The kid pointed. There are pictures on the wall. Huh? Jao turned to where she pointed. A reward poster had been tacked up near one of the store windows. His mouth curled into a smirk at the picture of himself, and he glanced at the list of offenses he had committed. Grand theft, larceny, murder, impersonating the royal plumber. He chuckled when he remembered that job. And the reward? One and a half million dollars. Hey, I broke a million. Wanted. The kid cocked her head as she sounded out the word. Wanted. What's that mean? Oh, uh... Jar scratched his whiskers. How to explain to a kid he was a wanted criminal, a master thief? While he never cared much about others' opinions, somehow he couldn't stomach the thought of wrecking this kid's innocence. Must mean he had a decent streak in him. He'd have to get rid of it once he figured out how to get rid of these kids. Uh, means a lot of people wanted me to hang out. Yeah, wants me for parties and stuff. The kid's eyes widened. So you're like a clown? She clapped her hands and bobbed up and down. <laughs> Do something funny. Ain't the baby hungry? J.R. shoveled her toward the speeder. Here, take the milk. Oh, thanks. After taking the canister, she climbed up on the platform and rummaged through the diaper bag for a baby bottle. The minute the baby saw the bottle, she wiggled and clawed at the kid's hand. Wait a minute, Cathra. The kid held the bottle out of the baby's grasp. Let me fix it. The baby, Cathra, J.R. gathered, glared at her sister. She gave an angry yell and pouted, her face turning red. But she did stop clawing. The kid opened the canister, fished around in the powder until she found a small plastic scoop and shoveled two of them into the bottle. Where's the water? Jar held it up, proud of his foresight. Here. He opened it and handed it to her. Her tongue sticking out of her mouth a bit, the kid poured the water into the powder with the expert hand of someone who'd practiced the motion a lot. Jar scrunched up his muzzle. At her age, he could barely pour orange juice in a glass, much less pour water into a baby bottle. How long had they been on their own? Cat, stop! Let me mix it! The yelling jerked JR back to the present. Kid once again held the bottle away from the baby, who clotted her hand to get to it. Wait! The kid gave the bottle a shake. The top flew off and the half-mixed formula splashed JR in the face. Oops! She looked up at him. Sorry, the top wasn't on right. The baby halted in her tracks. She held her hands together and looked up at him with large bluish-green eyes the epitome of an apologetic angel. Jar wiped the formula out of his eyes, snatched a bottle from the kid, and poured more water in. He screwed the top on properly and gave it a good shake before thrusting it back into the kid's hands. Thank you. The kid handed the bottle to the baby who snatched the whole thing and chugged it so fast it looked like she wouldn't choke herself. Whoa. Jar's eyes widened as he watched her drain the bottle. She's going to suck the bottle in. The kid nodded gravely. She didn't eat last night. Wait. Jar stared at her out of the corner of his eye. If the baby hadn't eaten, then... What about you, kid? When was the last time you ate? Um... She raised her eyes to the dark sky. Yesterday morning? Then you'll want something to eat, too. She smiled and nodded. But where am I going to find something for the kid? Everything closes up early around here. Jar scratched his cheek. Ah, yeah. There's that new fast food joint. Maybe they're still open. You like burgers, kid? The kid pouted. My name is Zena. Don't call me kid anymore. Yeah, you call me JR. He mounted the speeder. I've never been a mister before. Zena settled into the corner of the platform. My mamai says it's not nice to call grown-ups by their first name. JR's ears angled back. He hated being lectured, even by a five-year-old. Do you see your mommy around here? No. My mommy went away. She drew up her knees. 
She and Daddy left us with Auntie Rose because bad people were coming after Mamai. Then Auntie Rose said it wasn't safe at her house and took us to her friend's house. Then they left us with their friend. They didn't want us anymore, so they took us to their friend's house and... She paused and counted on her fingers. Then the ground shook and all the buildings fell down. So you were in the city when it collapsed? Zina nodded, her eyes shiny and moist. And it's my fault. Mama and Daddy left us because I wasn't a good girl. She drew up her knees and buried her face in them. Her shoulders shook. Jar's ears fell back. Crying? He didn't know how to handle a crying kid. Hey, stop. D don't cry. You're not a baby, right? I'm not crying. I'm not a crybaby. Zena glared at him with such fury that J.R. flinched. Quite a contrast to the tears flowing down her cheeks. Catherine put down her bottle long enough to pat Zima's arms. Uncle? Catherine looked up at her with tears in her eyes. I don't cry anymore. Zena wiped her eyes with her arm. If I cry, Cat starts crying too. Good. J.R. gave her a grin. Because I hate crybabies. Zena studied his face for a moment before cracking a smile. So, he started his speeder. You like burgers, kid? I said don't call me kid. I'll call you what I want. JR took off down the road. After all, what are you going to do about it?